Hey, what's up guys? We are back again this morning. Well, it might not be morning where you are, but it's morning here. With another classic circuit you should know. And this one is a tone generator. And it's based off of a 555 timer. So it is a form of an A-stable oscillator. Now, if you're unsure of oscillators and stuff, check out my oscillator playlist. I have a whole bunch of them in there. But basically, an oscillator is a circuit that just turns on and off. So, here's this one. This is our tone generator. I'm going to play it here for a second. Uh, High-pitched noise warning in 3, 2, 1. Okay. And that is a tone of around 1 kilohertz. Now, let's talk a little bit about the circuit. Like I said, it's based off of the 555 timer. The 555 timer, probably the most widely produced IC in history. Uh, from the 60s when it was invented, and it's, you'll find it today in every electronic component ever because it's so incredibly versatile. But it is a little 8-pin IC. Pin 1 is ground. Pin 2 is trigger. 3 is output. 4 is... Uh, reset low, 5 is control voltage, 6 is uh, six is uh, threshold, 7 is discharge, and 8 is VCC. Most of these pins are simple and self-explanatory like VCC, ground, reset, and output. Uh, a couple of them are a little bit more interesting like for instance pin number 6 is our threshold pin and it compares the voltage applied at the terminal with a reference voltage of two-thirds VCC. Pin number seven is our discharge, and it's an open collector output which discharges a capacitor at intervals based on uh, the timing controlled by the resistors and the capacitors and such. And then pin two is our trigger pin, and what it does is it's responsible for the trans... Uh, position of the flip-flop in the circuit. Running it on the low end here at 5 volts, it's good for uh, about 4.5 to 18 volts DC. So, what we've got here, and I'll bring the circuit back up here and sit it here. I was going to say so you can see it, but you can't really see it unless I do a little bit of this and that. Okay, there. So, we have resistor 1, which in this case is a 1 kilo ohm resistor, and resistor 2, which is a 10K potentiometer. And they are going to control the speed at which C1 right here, which is a 2.2 microfarad capacitor, charges and discharges. And when it reaches uh, 2 thirds VCC, this will go high. When it reaches one-third VCC, it will go low, and that is how we end up getting our simple square wave pulse out of this. Now, here's something that you might be thinking to yourself a little bit. You might be saying, well, I know that the charge, discharge of a capacitor looks more like this, whereas you're telling me the output of the 555 is a square wave. And that's true. And here's why. The 555 timer also acts as a Schmidt trigger. In case you're unaware of, of a Schmidt trigger, if we have our uh, sawtooth waveform here, our capacitor charging and discharging, what the Schmidt trigger does is it sets an upper threshold, let me zoom in here, and a lower threshold of one-third and two-thirds VCC. So when the signal crosses the upper two-thirds, the pulse goes high, and when it crosses the bottom one-third, the pulse goes low. So the Schmidt trigger is basically an analog to digital converter. But anyway, that's how we end up getting a square wave out of the charge and discharge pattern 
of a capacitor. So, the actual timing here is controlled by this capacitor here, which again is a 2.2 microfarad cap. But, we can give ourselves a little bit of adjustment with this 10K pot here. We can lower it down. Excuse me. We can bring it up. And that's giving us a range, 1900 hertz, that we can actually change the uh, frequency of this circuit. Now, you're also going to notice. that it is sensitive. This is a very sensitive circuit. Um, the capacitance of the breadboard, the capacitance of your hand, everything affects it. Let's bring in a little frequency counter here and even this is going to affect it. So I'll power it up. We'll attach our ground. Hold on. We'll attach the ground. Oh, it will not stay. Come on. And then we'll attach our probe and watch what happens. You see the frequency shift? So let's take it to the upper limit here, you can see. Oh, we got up to 2.5 that time. And down to uh, 514. But without the extra capacitance of that meter in there, we get down to the original ranges, which I explained to you. Now, if you want to change the range of it any more than that 2k that we can play with there well then you're going to have to change this capacitor so we're at 2.2 microfarad there let's go to 10 microfarad now what do you think is going to happen will the frequency be higher or lower lock in your votes now ready it's lower and then if I put in the uh, smallest one I got here which is a uh, 0.1 microfarad it should be quite a bit higher there you go let's uh take a look at what this one is so we're up to a 7K. Now I can't hear it anymore. Some of you guys with younger ears might be able to hear it. Yeah, we're up to 33 kilohertz. Pretty much ultrasonic in that range. Very, very cool. You could put a variable cap on there. Or you could even go with something like this. Uh, variable capacitance box and make yourself a completely variable thing but it's not necessary this is just a simple tone generator you know basically it's a clock generator it's whatever you need it to be and that is the beauty of the 555 timer it is just so versatile you can do whatever you want with it but anyway this is a classic circuit you should know all right I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to the patron. Big thanks to you guys for commenting. I love it when you comment. I read them. I try and get back to everybody. So comment. Let me know what you think. All right? All right. That's it. I'm out. Peace.